I've got a very hard working Ford 8 end tractor that I've restored a couple of times. Here's a photo of the tractor. Uh, I, I use several products in refinishing this tractor, some of them purchased from Ford, some of them purchased from local department stores. I started off with the small parts like the steering wheel. You can see it's pretty ratted out. Uh, so I filled all of the, I filed down and filled all of the cracks with a product called Poor Putty, sanded it down and then I painted it with the Dupacolor truck bed liner. I also did the same thing to the seat. You could see the seat in the last picture. The seat's painted with the truck bed liner, but the spring is painted simply flat black. All the sheet metal parts, including the light rings, by the way, I just took down the metal and polished and clear coated. Then I masked the tractor and took the frame outside in the open air and painted all the red parts. Here's the views of, of, of uh, the various parts and pieces. Notice the oil cleaner and the quadrant controls here and the air cleaner on the bottom. There's the front view of the engine. Spark plugs are masked. Back of the generator is masked. The back of the starter is masked. Here's the oil filter, quadrant control, and some of the three-point items. Here's the, the three-point hitch items, the battery box, and the air, air tube. Then I, then I painted all the gray parts, uh, wheels, bumpers, painted, painted the wheel rings with the tires on because the tires are filled with fluid. Here's the front tires and the grill and, and the headlights and the air, air, air cleaner. Here's the two uh, taillight mounting brackets for, for, that go on the rear fenders. I moved the tractor in the garage to work on it. Uh, here's, here's, here's the various views of, of, the, of the frame while I was working on it. Note the, the uh, running boards. I, I also painted them with the dupla color truck bed liner. Then I put neoprene boots on all of the ball joints. And where I didn't have neoprene boots, I made leather uh, washers. But the neoprene boots really look nice on the system. I, I then installed the carburetor and, and governor linkages and all of the oil lines. Here's the oil line going to the governor. Here's the throttle linkage going to the main, in, main throttle. Oh, that's the choke linkage, excuse me. And there's the throttle linkage and the rest of the oil tubes. That, that go around the side to the to the oil cleaner. Uh, here, note the dipstick. Note the note all the aluminum parts. Here's the rear dipstick. I had to reinforce it. I was always kicking it and bending it over. Then here's the quadrant control. Uh, up down for the hydraulics and all the hydraulic controls. Also included some diagrams of, of what the hydraulics look like in the neutral, raised, and and the lowered position. Uh, just for your for your information. Uh, the, the next thing I did was I, 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 ins I, I, I installed the, the footboards on the left and right hand side, again painted with the truck bed liner for, for resilience. Uh, then install the exhaust because it's connected to the running boards. There's a muffler going out the back connected with a bracket to the running board. <coughs> electrical was next. Big issue with the electrical. I mean it's, very, it's a very simple system. Here's the, here's the electrical diagram. For both the uh, uh, newer and older model 8 in tractors, side mounted and front mounted distributor. There's the front mounted distributor with the wires run up into the tube and the spark plug wires on the spark plugs and then the wire run out the back of the tube to the uh, console dash. Uh, here's the generator. Look at the extra wire that goes to the front headlamps on that generator. With the dashboard with it with everything mounted choke headlights I, I polished the solenoid valve of course and then wired it in here's the amp meter and the ignition switch which I bought from Walmart and and a dropping resistor for the coil here, here they are all installed here's a side view of that same installation on the on the left hand side of the tractor voltage regulator on the right hand side of the tractor oil pressure meter with oil pressure tube going up to it there's a light switch, also bought from Walmart, for the headlights. Here's the solenoid, all connected up with its copper, uh, pushing going right to the starter and wired to the uh, uh, start switch, front of the solenoid. Here's the grounding arrangement I used. I, 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 I used cables direct to ground right to the sides of the chassis. Here's the battery box. Here, that's the throttle spring at the very bottom of it. Here's the battery installed in the battery box with just the negative wire connected. 
By the way, this is a negative ground tractor, not positive ground. There's several views of the battery in the tractor, ready for testing out of the electrical equipment. Then I routed the wires to the rear tail lights and the starter switch. This is before I routed the wires. And then here's a view with the wires routed, and then I put the wires in, in uh, a protective tubing that, that I purchased from the automotive store. Or speedwaymotors.com, great place to purchase stuff. Note the boots also on the uh, shift lever. Here's the wire routed to the rear, routed to the rear through the hole in the, in the crankcase connect, uh, flanges, and over to the rear axle so that it can be connected to the tail lights. Now there's only one wire running in this tubing. Uh, there it is running to the rear fender, up the fender, back through the fender hole, and out that hole to, to, to the tail light. A little bit, a little bit more detail of that. Here's the, here's the left hand fender installed with, with the wiring run to it, wiring run out connected to the lights. Also there's a uh, uh, work light that, that, and a switch back there. And neither, neither of these, none of these lights work unless the light switch is turned on. Park light park lights only. Here's, here's how I routed the wiring in the hood, under the hood. Uh, this is the wiring that ultimately goes to the connector on the generator so that they turn the lights on. Here's what it looks like. Also used a little bit of fender molding between the, uh, between the uh, side panel and the main hood itself. Here's the hood being put in place with detail of how I connected the headlight wiring to the main wiring on the tractor. Here's a photo of the toolbox with all the wiring in place ready to go. And just so you guys will know, here's the tools that come with an 8 end tractor. Then the next thing I did was I mounted the radiator. I, I made some cushions out of leather to put the radiator on, bolted the radiator right into place. There it is with the cushions underneath it. Then, of course, you put on the lower and upper radiator tubes, hoses. Then, the, then I, you know, I put on the front wheels, which are pretty simple, then the back wheels. So you roll the back wheel over to the tractor, and then you gradually jack the tractor up until the lug nuts align with the wheel. That wheel is heavy. It must weigh seven or 800 pounds. Then you put the lug nuts on and, and torque them down to torque. Here's the side panel that goes under the hood with the fender molding that I used on it. There's the hood, painted, ready to go. Then there's the side panel bolted to the hood with the headlamp on it. I'm, I'm assembling all the gray parts at this point. I install the, the front emblem on the tractor, headlights, uh, the, the hood latch, everything ready to go on the hood so that it can be lifted in to position and put, put right onto the tractor. There's a, position, there's a photo with the radiator in place, upper and lower radiator hoses, and the radiator cap just to keep things clean. Then I lowered the hood right onto the tractor. I used again the fender molding between the dashboard and the hood itself. You can see that right here. The steering wheel, by the way, is on. Notice it's painted with the truck bed liner. Just a few more photos of, of positioning the hood and making it work. Two bolts up front, four bolts uh, on the dashboard. Then you put the grill in and you tighten the bolts. There's the dashboard, there's the, the, the fender molding. You, you can see. Then looking down through the hood latch at the battery, install the air cleaner right up against the, the air filter, uh, and, and there you go. Voila, we've got almost almost a finished tractor right here. There's the back of the tractor finished, ready to go, lighting, every, wheels on. There's the three-point hitch, all set up and ready to go. And there's. There's uh, the deer that was watching me put this thing together when I built it.